Okay, so let's now add the animation that will make the, the spheres bounce. Okay, so they're going to bounce when the mouse clicks on them. And we'll have to set up a cursor to change the, uh, the weight, basically so that the mouse can click on them and create these events. Okay, so animation time. Animations. Now, animations are fun in, mix, in uh, A frame. Basically, because we want to make it bounce, we want it to go up and then come down. Animations tend to go one way, so you actually have to, on the mix in, we're going to have two animations described on the one mix in one for the up path and the other for the down path. The other thing is animations automatically when they complete they send an event and we can trigger the anim the next animation so we can chain them together um, so that the next animation will trigger it'll begin when the previous animation completes right so they chain together so let's make a mix in so this will be bouncy uh, I'm going to make this anim this uh, mix in over multiple lines. So here we're going to have animation underscore underscore. This is a label bounce up. So animation is the component underscore underscore bounce up is declaring a a multiple instance use of that component, and bounce up will become the uh, label for this component entry. So here we're going to be, oh, whoops, go back, property. We're going to be applying animation on the property of position. We are going to go from 0, 0, 0, because it's bouncing up, to 0, 1, 0. Now, this animation can be applied to anything in the scene. But here we are fixing the coordinates, right, to the to zero 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 to z and zero one zero, right. So these coordinates are fixed. So the way we get around this is that we'll have a parent-child relationship in the entities later on. We'll just adjust those. So what it means is that we'll use the position, and this is why it was good to split the uh, mix-ins for position from everything else, from the geometry and color. So we can actually make a parent entity, which will have the position of, of like the root or the, yeah, let's call it the root, the root position of a sphere. And then the sphere will be relative to that, that parent and it will be free to move up and down relative to that parent. So relative to that parent, zero, zero, zero is exactly at the, wherever the parent is positioned. And zero, one, zero will be one meter above wherever the parent is positioned. So that way we can apply bouncy to the child entity, which will describe the look and color, right, the, the shape and color of the ball, the sphere. Okay, so let's do this. So we have now the property, we have the from and the to. We need to make, give it a duration. Let's give it, say, half a second. And that's enough to make the animation work. But now we need to tell it when to start. So it's start events oops are now we could specify a click here and so the click will actually make it begin now if we give it no nothing else then the animation will only uh, only begin when there's a click and it won't loop so now we need the downward animation so bounce down equals now most of this is the same The from is from zero one zero, so we need to reverse the from and two, and it goes back down to zero zero zero. Same duration, and the start will be the bounce up. So the event that's automatically created is called animation complete. Label bounce up. So this is just chaining these two. So basically, when bounce up finishes, bounce down will automatically begin. And then when that finishes, that will end. There is no loop, but we can come back and change that 
So we'll see how that works. So now let's apply that to here. So now I'm going to copy that line. I'm going to paste it there. And we'll just move that up there. Now we, we get rid of the sphere part here. And we get rid of this ID. And we get rid of the position there. And we make it bouncy. Okay. So now the position is described in the parent. Um, the sphere is a bouncy sphere located, you know, as a child off that parent. That's basically what we need to set up for all the spheres. Uh, we can test this one. So we need to add another entity, which will be the cursor. So we're just defining the mouse cursor now. So the mouse cursor uh, will be uh, ray origin mouse. So what it means is as the moose, bleh, moose, the moose, no, the mouse moves around the screen, um, when you click, or just the fact that there's a mouse moving on the screen, the mouse will have <coughs> a ray, like a laser beam, pointing forward through the camera. And when it hits an object, then whatever event the mouse is doing, like if it's mouse enter, or mouse leave, mouse click, um, the ray discovers what it is in the scene the event applies to. So that's half of it. The next thing we need to con configure is ray caster, this time with an A. <coughs> and we can give the ray caster component some filtering. So objects, ugh, objects, and we can say only look for things that have geometry. Okay. Now we should be able to reload that scene and we should be able to make the far left sphere bounce, but none of the others. So let's see that that works. Reload. I'll move it back. So we haven't changed the camera in any other way, so we haven't, set, we haven't used the rig yet. Now we can see that anything that has geometry is clickable and the mouse has gone from the hand to the, the, finger, the click finger, which is like you know a link in a web page. So if I click this one or this one, nothing happens. I click this one, it bounces up, comes down, and stops. Okay, it doesn't continue. So if we want that to continue forever, then we just need to, this is start events, it's a list. So we just need to add to this list that when the animation, wow, bounce down needs an E. Glad I found that. Um, when bounce down is complete, then we want the bounce up to start again so it can be either the click or the, uh, the um, bounce down finishing that makes it go up automatically. So that way it'll just keep looping. Once triggered, it'll just keep going. Animation complete, bounce down. Okay, so if we save that reload, move back. So again, these other ones do nothing. Mid does nothing. Far left, hey. Uh, it's funny. Animation complete. Oh, two underscores. That's what's wrong. Try that again. The two underscores are important. They separate the... the well, they, they basically uh, say where the label will be. So because it only had one underscore, it, it just wasn't right. So this should continue forever. Yes, and the others still don't do anything. So there we are. The bouncy is indeed bouncy. Now you might say it doesn't look very natural as a bounce and that'll be the easing. So we could change the easing value but I'm not going to bother. Uh, let's just focus on setting up all our events. So, I mean we only have to change the mix in once and we can fix it in that one place. It's easy enough to do. So I'm going to do the same thing. I copy the line, spread that over to make it um, have a multiple lines, space it out a bit Get rid of the ID, because that needs to be unique. Get rid of the position, replace this with bouncy, and get rid of the sphere here. Okay, so that's your mid. Do the same thing here, copy that down, paste it in, space it out, get rid of the ID, get rid of the position, add bouncy, 
get rid of the sphere and that's that one and copy this is the last one now we can get rid of the geometry here because that parent doesn't need any geometry so it doesn't need the sphere uh, this inner part where the sphere is doesn't need the ID it doesn't need the position it does need bouncy and it will need that geometry so that's fine so now if we go back and reload now all of them should be bouncy so I click this one but not the boxes of course no. okay neat okay so the next thing to set up is uh, let's see well we can do the camera rig so, okay, entity okay so we need whoops go inside there um, give it an ID of camera rig then in here we need to give it a camera uh, we should now we had a camera pause, so mix in, so I should apply that cam pause. There we are. Okay, so mix in. Ah, first of all, this is the rig, so let's tell you what. The mix in still applies because that was for the cam pause. That was for the actual entity once it is. Um, so the actual camera rig itself was going to have that initial position. Okay, so now a yes entity. This is the one that's the camera. Did I? Nope. Uh, what, what? Yes. Okay. Camera. So I thought I cut the camera bit out, but I didn't. So I'm just undoing that. Okay. So let's just put a bit of space around this and make it obvious what's going on here. So this is the camera and cursor config okay now so this is enough to make a camera in the scene and to put it inside the camera rig the only thing is uh, if we do this there's no look control so I can't move in fact let's just see it okay so if I do this now I can't drag the mouse around I can still click on things because that's the cursor but I can't you know look around and so that's not helpful okay so we want a uh, look pose a look controls so open controls now if I save that reload now I can look around that's good and the other thing is we wanted that offset so position equals zero zero four so it's set back there we go so now I can see the entire scene and it can look around. So that's useful. But we can't move. There's no WASD because we didn't add that component. All right. Now we are fully ready to begin adding some JavaScript and defining um, you know, which of these objects are targets to move the camera rig to, right? to those targets. So there's a couple of different ways we're going to do that. Uh, if you like this video, please like it. That helps a lot. Uh, feel free to subscribe. A lot of the channel has things around using Unity, uh, but obviously A-Frame is interesting as well because it implements Entity Component System. Okay, thanks for watching.